whether you're eating turkey on Thanksgiving or throwing the old pigskin around. Everyone is in agreement that Thanksgiving has always been about coming together. On campus, Mike Cronwet, update news. Now we have Mike with Arts and Entertainment. So Mike, what was going on in the AS Lawn this week? Well, a lot of stuff going on this week, so let's get right into it. Organizations came together Wednesday to celebrate the Mexican celebration, Dia de los Muertos. Skeletons, flowers, and lots of festive colors covered altars as a tribute to past loved ones. Cassie Pena reports. Fans and Raider officials have unique ways of honoring the father of the Raider Nation. Within hours after owner Al Davis passed away October 8th, dozens of people gathered at the team headquarters in Alameda. He never expected it to happen uh, because he's such a football icon and did so much for the game of football, not only at the NFL level, but at all levels. One fan dressed as a gorilla showed up to pay his respects. In any other setting, it may seem disrespectful, but to mourn Davis, it made perfect sense. The gorilla is part of the extreme fan base known as the black hole. And he loved that mystique. He loved having that reputation. He loved being an outlaw. Last Sunday, the Raiders paid tribute to Davis with a halftime show that featured former players and longtime friend John Madden. On Sunday, the Raiders did what Davis wanted them to do most. No matter if you hated the guy or loved the guy, everyone's in agreement. There's only one Al Davis, and there always will be only one Al Davis. In Alameda, microphone went update news. When you look at Michael Spiro, you probably wouldn't guess what he does for a living. You know, I, I had the job, so couldn't couldn't be happier once I heard the news. But the 23-year-old who was hired as the new football play-by-play -play announcer for the Spartans has plenty of big game experience. At his alma mater of Kansas University, Spiro did radio play-by-play -play for the football and basketball games and even was recognized by famous TV color commentator Brent Musburger during an ESPU televised game. That red polo shirt, Kyle Larson came over and I should say Michael Spiro is the young man there. He's doing the play-by-play. -play. But the man who Spiro replaced in the booth couldn't be happier. This is the first time in 11 years that I'll watch a Spartan game without being in the radio booth and I'm really excited about it. Chisholm recently got a new role with the athletic department at SJSU and says he's offering to help Spiro settle into his new role. I'm really excited for Michael Sparrow who, is, who has replaced me as the play-by-play -play announcer. And I can go into his office, bounce ideas off of him, ask him for advice, so it's great uh, having him around whenever I need him. So if you're not at the game, tune in and listen to calls such as this. 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! On campus, Michael Cronway, Update News. In their 2011 home season with Nevada, there are a few mishaps in the pregame, including a wrong time smoke entrance. It was only a symbol of what was to come. Nevada gets on the board first with a Mike Bell touchdown from four yards out. Later in the first, the Spartans respond with Dasmond Stewart scrambling down the sideline for a 28-yard touchdown to tie it up at 7. After a SJSU turnover, Mike Bell scored on a 1-yard touchdown on 4th and goal to put Nevada up 14-7. Just as the previous week at UCLA, the Spartans are down 14-7 at half. They're very much in this game, running the ball pretty well and keying in on some few turnovers. Let's go to the second half for more highlights. After stiffening up on the goal line, SJSU forces Nevada to a field goal and a 17-7 lead. But after kicker Harrison Wade misses the field goal, the score remains 17-7. With a Brandon Rutley touchdown and the score 17-14, the Spartans get the ball back and march down the field to the Nevada 15-yard line. But Matt Faulkner is picked off by Duke Williams, and that is all she wrote for the Spartans as Nevada would run out the clock and escape with the win. After the game, a disappointed Mike McIntyre. Young men are battling and, and boxing and fighting, and uh, uh, they will not lay down and um, will rebound and, uh, and find a way to start getting over the hump. On campus, Mike Cronwet, Update News. The Spartans took the field against their local rival, 7th ranked Stanford Cardinal. Early in the first quarter, Stanford connects on a chip shot field goal to take the lead. It was only the beginning of a very long day for the Spartans. Harrison Wade was unable to connect with the field goal and the score remained 10-0 Stanford after one. On to the second and things didn't get any better for the Spartans as Brandon Rutley fumbles the exchange with Chandler Jones which is recovered by Stanford. It was one of six fumbles by the Spartan offense. This led to Andrew Luck connecting on a beautiful pass through the corner of the end zone. Late in the second quarter, the Spartans were finally able to get on the scoreboard with a Harrison Wade field goal. 
The score right now at half is 27 to three Stanford. The Spartans have been unable to run the ball and it shows with the scoreboard. Though the Spartans have outgained the Cardinal 169 to 159. The second half wasn't any better for the Spartans as Stanford continued the massacre, cruising to a lopsided 57 to three victory. After the game, an upset coach Mike McIntyre had this to say about his team. We need to play better and um, we will. In Palo Alto, Michael Cronowet, Update news. With blueprints already in place, the city is anxious to have the A's come to San Jose. It has been waiting for more than two years. Last month, A's general manager Billy Bean said he expects a resolution of the situation very soon. Stadiums can be good and bad for a city in these tough economic times. But what if San Jose's gamble doesn't pay off? What are we going to use that site for if not an A's stadium? You know, maybe something even better. Um, and so you have, we have to hope that the people who control that land, the city, uh, use it for the best purposes. The decision whether to move or stay has been tough on diehard A's fans. I'd be really happy if the A's moved from Oakland. I've been an A's fan my whole life. Uh, I think that San Jose can definitely support another professional team and it would probably be best for the team too to get out of that stadium that they're currently playing in. It is sad to see them leave Oakland because that means a lot of jobs will be lost there, but it also will create more jobs down here. I'm standing on what could be home plate of the new Oakland A's baseball stadium here in San Jose, but for right now, it's still a vacant parking lot. No matter if you want the A's to stay in Oakland or move to San Jose, all fans can agree that they want the team to get a new stadium. In San Jose, Michael Cronowet, Update News.